Yo, what's good people? It's Jay Cactus and we're back again with episode 14 of Cactus Combos. In today's episode, I've got another highly requested and highly talented guest with me. This man doesn't even need an introduction, but for anyone that hasn't heard his name, he's produced with people like Stormzy, Digger D, H, Central C, just to name a few. He goes by Chris Rich Beats. Chris Rich, what's good, bro? Yeah, what's good, bro? You alright? Yeah, all good, man. I appreciate you coming on because, yo, just I've been following you for a minute and, bro, it looks like you're, you're non-stop at the moment, getting placements left, right and centre, active on YouTube. Thank you, bro. Like, everything. So how's it all been? Crazy. Yeah, I appreciate that, bro. Um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's been a bit busy recently, I can't lie. Just lots of stuff yeah. coming in, me trying to stay on top of it all. Yeah, of course. And when I, when I was speaking to you recently on Instagram, you mentioned that you were still in school. So what, are you still in college? Yeah, I'm um, year 13. I'm just finishing off now. I got exams right. in like a few weeks, I think. Oh, that's crazy. I mm. bet that's hard balancing everything, like balancing college and this life. Yeah, I can't lie. For a lot of it, <laughs> I was just ignoring college. I, just, I wasn't yeah. really doing any of the work. But um, yeah, and since we were off because of Corona as well, we weren't out. Like I didn't even need to do anything. Um, yeah, yeah. We were just on our lessons and I was just putting them on and making beats in the background. <laughs> I suppose yeah. once you've had the success that you've had, it's like, I bet nothing else even matters right now, does nah, it? No, that's, just... that's, 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 that's what I'm, yeah, it's hard to think about school, honestly, but it's yeah, got to be course. done, man. I'm still there. I suppose because you've got this far, so why not just finish yeah, it off? Yeah, yeah, may as well finish it. Yeah. So what was the plan after college? I bet plans have changed now, but did you have a plan uh, at first? Were you going to go to uni or were you not really sure? I'm not sure. I, I was going to see, like, where life takes me really but now yeah I'm not going to need yeah. like that I will anyway um, I don't even know what I would have done if I if I hadn't have like if the music hadn't have worked yeah yeah it's tough like at that time you don't really know what like, mm. if, it, if it's not like your passion you don't really know what else you want to do yeah because you're so focused I was trying to find on what thing. I enjoyed and I wasn't yeah. really sure like mm, do I really want to do that do I really yeah, want to yeah. mm. what were you doing at or what are you doing at college what are you studying I'm doing maths, business, and English. Right, right. So yeah, not even music. Nah, no music. Yeah, I was gonna if if I if I hadn't been doing music, I'd have been going down the ac academic route. Like I would have been like, yeah, I don't know, yeah, being an accountant or something or some one of them type <laughs> of jobs. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. I suppose when it comes to music, because I was the same. I didn't do music in college or anything. Because mm. I always told myself, I, I don't, I don't really need college to because at the time I was nah. spitting so it's like I don't need college to tell me how to spit or how to make beats yeah. you know what I mean no nah, it's like my, my mom always says to me like oh you should you should do you should just do it and get like a quick degree in music like it'll be easy but I'm thinking yeah you don't go you, you're never in the studio with people and they never ask oh have you got your degree have like exactly. oh you can't get in the studio if you haven't got your degree it's like the work <laughs> speaks for itself more time so yeah, yeah. You think Digger D is not accepting your beats because you haven't got degrees yeah. on there <laughs> you ain't got a fucking Agree. Yeah. So, what are you, are you getting pressure from? I suppose uh, like parents and teachers still telling you that maybe you should go to uni. And at I least mean, at the start, degree. at the start, it was like that. But I mean, my parents are quite supportive. They just wanted yeah. me to finish school. That's all they asked for. Um, yeah. Yeah. The teachers were the hardest ones to sort of persuade. <laughs> but and still, still now, some of them are like, "Chris, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that?" But it's like, even yeah. at this point. Yeah. Even at this point, but. I mean, I don't really, I don't really like making a bait to teachers like that. Like, I'm not really telling yeah. them, "Oh, this is what I'm doing." I just, I'm just living like normal, to be honest. Yeah, I go to school like normal. So, I was gonna ask what what college life is like because you must be a, a local celeb in college, but I suppose nah, you haven't even been even, in anyway, have you? Nah, I mean, we've gone in recently. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool and all, uh, but yeah, I just, I prefer going to college just like just normal. I don't really like. Any of the other crazy stuff that comes, like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I just like being regular. Yeah, yeah. You just go in there, you've got a job to do, and then come out. Yeah. One of them ones. So, what um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so obviously, it seems like everything's happened so fast for me following you and been watching what you've been doing. It, it feels like everything's happened fast, but I'm sure it hasn't. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure you've been active like in music or you've been making music since a young age. So I mean, I can't lie. It has happened really fast. I've been doing, I've been doing music a, a while. Like, yeah. Um, I'd say like four, five, six years, like making beats and then probably um, 
like playing instruments longer, but then yeah. taking it seriously, like, oh, I'm going to be producing now. It's probably only taken like two, one and a half, two years. That's mad. It's crazy to think because a lot of, a lot of producer stories that I listen to, maybe it's just like the older heads, but I always hear stories of like, right, producers, they've been grafting for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. They've gone through like hell to get where they are. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you haven't grafted because you clearly have, but for some people it's taken like 10 years and for you yeah. it's only taken a few. So what do you think's the difference? Why do you think you've had so much success so quickly? I mean, it's, I think it's different for different people. Like someone, my path isn't going to be the same as anyone else's. Like everyone yeah. comes up differently. I think with me, it was just like, um, like I watched a lot of podcasts and stuff by a producer yeah. grind and all that. And like, so all the information's out there of how to, how to be a producer. And it was just yeah, like, yeah. Sort of, you have to have your business mind on right. Um, not just the music. You need to be making unique music that stands out. So you've got like your own identity. Um, yeah. And a lot, a lot of it was lucky times as well. So I was making Pop Smoke type beats while Pop Smoke was blowing up before he was yeah. like such a huge artist and way before he died. Um, yeah. So it was just, t- it was timing really. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've got a good sense. manager as well. He linked me in with a lot of artists in the studio. Oh yeah. I didn't even know you had a manager mm-hmm. at this point. How long you had the manager yeah. there? Uh, I've worked with him about, uh, like, probably two years now. Oh yeah. Did he find mm-hmm. you through YouTube or was that? He, no, he found me through, it's one of my first placements. It's a, it's a song by A2 Anti called, right. um, what it's called, you know? <laughs> it's a song by AT and yeah. he he found he found um found it and was like oh who made this beat and he was messaging me on Instagram and I was really small at this point um, yeah and yeah we just started speaking and he does he deals with the, more of the industry side with me and then right. I deal with more of the internet side on my own that makes sense do you think it's important for producers to have a manager I mean I would say yes but the majority of the time the managers that are gonna be um like offering their services to a producer. They're not, they're not going to be that serious. And it, yeah. um, they're not going to be, they're not really going to help you that much. Um, right. I think if, if you find a man, like if you find a manager and your, your vision both align and it's like, yeah, you both want the same thing for your future. And then, it, it, and it makes sense. Like, um, and you can agree on terms and stuff and it makes sense. Like, I think it's, it's definitely helpful. Yeah, it's yeah. not even just the manager. It's, it's more just having more people on board just to help you, like, propel you further. Definitely. I suppose the more people you have on board, the more connections each person has. Yeah, literally. The more opportunities it's, it's, it's that just, come up. It's easier. It's easier to get stuff done. Yeah. I suppose it's similar to anything in business, though. Like, if you mm. have a manager, that's you getting into business with someone. So you have to trust that person. You have to be on the same wavelength, don't you? You have to have the same end goal in mind. But yeah. it sounds like what you've got with yours, like, works out perfect. Mm. Mm. No, it works hard, man. I, I really like my manager. Yeah. And I suppose for, for new producers as well, like they don't really need a manager unless they've got something to manage. Like mm-hmm. I see a lot of people asking questions like, do I need a manager? But they don't really have anything that needs managing. Yeah. So I suppose the that, manager would only... That's a good point, only, actually. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose a manager would only want you if either they it's just pure talent they just straight up believe in you or they can mm. kind of see the traction. It's like, you know what, if this guy just had a bit of a nudge and if I linked him with the the right people, then then shit can happen. Mm. That's it. In no. my head, that's what I'm thinking about anyway. No, that's 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 true. Cause there was a there was a period of time when I wasn't like um I didn't hadn't really built my name yet and I was yeah. getting quite frustrated because I was like, I know my beats are there. It's yeah, just yeah. no one wants to rap on them. And even if like my manager's got the links and he goes, Oh, like for instance, let's say I don't know, Morrison or someone, he goes, oh, Morrison, do you want to rap on this guy's beat? And I haven't built my name yet. It's a bit like, yeah. uh, what, well, why, why would I? So yeah, it's like, yeah. I think having a manager is cool and it, well, it, it helps a lot because it, it has someone else working for you. But at the same time, you need to have value in yourself and you need to work for a lot of the stuff yourself. So um, like there's certain stuff that only you can do and no one else can help you with. You need to build your name yourself. So yeah, yeah, that's facts. Suppose you need to build up your personal brand to a point where people recognize yeah. it and they want to work with you as a producer because of your name, not just because of your beats. It's like murder beats, isn't it? Like yeah, literally, everyone it's wants branding, to work it's with business. Him. It's yeah. a brand. You, 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 when you're a producer, you, you've, you've built a brand and it's like who have you worked with, what are you known for, what's your sound, 
um, like what's your mix? Even like I think it's just little things. Like if you listen to Metro Boomin, like you can go on Apple uh, Apple Music or something or Spotify and listen to all the tracks produced by Metro Boomin, and you can tell he's using the yeah. same sort of drum samples, same mixes, same sort of presets. Like you have that soundscape for your um, like for your identity almost. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's about having a signature sound, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's definitely something that you've got as well. And Thanks, I suppose that didn't just happen like overnight. You probably tried mm. different things until you got to that point. Yeah. So when was the first time you actually made a beat? Oof. Probably like 2015. 2015. 2015, I think. Yeah. Was it always FL? Maybe? Yeah, always FL. I was watching tutorials by, um. there's a guy called The Beat Buffs. I don't even think was, I've um, seen his. Is he the still beat active? Buffs. Yeah, his name's uh, Halfway now, I think. He right. works for Split Splitmind, you know Tree Sound, Splitmind? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crew. Yeah, the, it's the, I think it's the leader of that, or the owner of that or something. Right. His name's ha- Halfway now. Um, He used to be called The Beat Bus, and there's also another channel, The Studio Plug. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know yeah, the they're plug. still active, I think. Yeah. Uh, I used to watch them. Yeah, just loads of little guys as well here and there. And I was just making like trap beats, really. Yeah. It seems like everyone starts on trap beats now because mm. there's so many tutorials for trap beats. So it's like, mm. I feel like them beats, they're kind of easier to make than drill. I don't know if yeah. you agree with that, but no, 100%. Yeah. It feels like with, with drill beats, it's a bit more meticulous. Like you have to like, you know, like doing all the slides, like there's a mm. lot more detail into it. People think they're simple beats because yeah, hundred percent. A lot of people think that they're simple beats and maybe like the old school ones were where it's just like mm. the same piano chords, but especially like, now with your kind of beats and more melodic drill, it's like, it's just advanced so much. Mm. So you were playing I, instruments before, do you say guitar? Yeah, I was playing guitar and bass guitar. Um, yeah. Like I've been playing them since like primary school, but I didn't really take them seriously. I still, I still like, don't really take them seriously, but I can play them if I, if I have to, like I've got guitars there. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a good skill to have though. Just mm. learning any instrument is a sick skill to have as a producer. So what yeah, were you just 100%. playing? What kind of music were you into when you were learning guitar? Like, were you, were you playing hip hop shit or? Nah, not hip hop. It was just what my um guitar teacher in like primary school was, yeah. was telling me. So it was like Nirvana, Metallica. He right. was just giving me like the pieces of paper. Oh, here's how to play it. And I was just learning that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But I suppose that, that helped you train your ear from a start. Because mm. that's one big thing that a lot of people struggle with at the start is just having the ear for production, like getting your mm. ear weights in tune. And just figuring oh, yeah. out like, like, like what should call where. But yeah, I suppose playing guitar from an early age is just, I suppose when you got into FL and opened it for the first time, you already had like some musical knowledge, didn't you? So it probably made it a bit I easier. I mean, it wasn't really theory though. It was, I was kind of like just learning tabs. So I don't know if you, I don't know if you play the guitar, but when you're learning tabs, you're just learning the numbers of the, like every fret is a number. So if it's, right. like, if it's a number three, it's the third fret. So I didn't even get the music theory behind it. Yeah. But um, that came with just making beats, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, n- I've never tried playing guitar. I've got two sitting mm. in the room. I've got a bass guitar there and then an electric one behind me, but they're just for show right now. I'll, t- I'll tell you what's good. Yeah, there's an there's a Xbox game or PlayStation game. You can get a PC as well called Rocksmith. Yeah. And it's like Guitar Hero, um, but for real guitar. So you plug in a guitar, just plug uh, it straight mad. into your interface. Yeah. Was, like it was just a USB straight into my Xbox. I used to play it and then it used to be like Guitar Hero, but I could, you have to like match it on a real guitar. So it teaches you how to play the songs. Wow. That's crazy. Um, Is yeah. That a new like, game? Has that been out for years? Nah, and it's been Never out for time. I, I, yeah. I was, I was on that like really strong. That That's, that's probably how I learned most of my techniques on guitar. Just that's a perfect rocking. way to learn. Like for, yeah, for kids, no, especially it's, if it's you're into game. gaming and stuff. That's sick. Yeah. So, so what you started on track beats, um, and then what made you move onto drill beats? I think I moved on to drill when I just was in school and every, all of my friends were listening to drill and I f- yeah. thought it was like a, quite an interesting genre. Um, it was about 2018. I think I, I started making it myself. Yeah. Um, back when it was like CGM, um, they were the biggest guys and Russ and that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's when I started making drill beats, and I, I yeah, it's just a, it's a really unique genre. I feel it's like yeah, definitely. It's, it's the bounces and the sounds and that. It's, it was just new to me at the time. It's just I never heard anything like it. So I was like, yeah, let me let me try and make this. Yeah, you're right. It's quite 
well, it was a unique thing when it came out, like the bounce, the slides, everything. Mm. So yeah, it definitely turned a lot of heads. Mm. So once you started producing Drill, how long do you think it took for you to realize that your beats are actually good? I know everyone at the start thinks that the mm. beats are good, even when they're not good, but there must have been a point mm. where you're like, you know what, my beats are actually ready now to send out to eyes. I think like a, a year of making drill beats, I reckon. Yeah. And then my track beats were like, like I'd say my track beats were pretty good for a while, but it's just, there's a, there is a learning curve with drill. So it's like, it does take a while to l- like learn how to do the slides and learn how to make stuff sound good and yeah, mixes yeah. and learn what's normal. Can I, can I do this? Is that going to sound too weird? And at the time, drill was still really dark. Like drill was still the piano stuff. So I was just trying right. to do my own spin on it and trying to add like melodies like Q Beats, Frank Dukes type melodies, the, the D-Tune stuff back then. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was yeah, just trying to When you haven't it. seen like tutorials on Drill, I know that there's a lot out now, but maybe when it was first popping, there wasn't really mm. any tutorials. So no, there wasn't, it was there more was like trying to crack the code, wasn't it? Once you mm. hear like a certain style, like them dark pianos, you're just trying things like, how are they getting this piano to sound oh, like I, that? I literally, <laughs> I literally like YouTube's MP3, Ghost yeah. and BK Beats. Ghost and BK were like my biggest, yeah, like this yeah, is a yeah, yeah. I want to um, so Ghosty and BK were probably my biggest inspirations when I was starting. And I just YouTube to MP3 their beats, drag them in my FL studio <laughs> and then get my patterns like lined up with theirs and then try, yeah. try and remake. I couldn't, I could never remake the melodies, but always the drums I could get like the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sounds cold and the mixes and stuff. I could see, oh, how's this level? Like, I think remaking does this help a lot when you're learning. Yeah, definitely bringing something into the session and just mm. using it as a reference track in a way. Yeah, a hundred percent. I was I was just remaking it, like literally just re, just just remaking the beats. I, I wasn't putting them out or anything, but I was yeah. just to learn it. Yeah, that's what I, I've done that quite a bit. Like when I was trying to get into drill, I did it with one of your beats. I did it with. Mm. Woo. Nah, I, clock, I, clock, I remember one time someone sent <laughs> me and said, "Oh, you copied Jay Cactus's beat," and I <laughs> I saw it and I I was like, "What? What the story?" And then I I watched the story and I was like, "Oh, yeah. this, this is similar to my beat." Just yeah, to clear that up for anyone, yeah, check yeah. the video. <laughs> That's all Chris Rich. I think I even credited you in the description or yeah, something. Yeah, thanks, but... <laughs> bro. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> that beat, though, the Woo beat, that's, that's something insane, mm. man. That's like, literally, I'm not even like capping. That's one of the best beats I've heard. And I think a lot Thank of people you, have said that too. And it's probably mm. why it's done so well on YouTube. It's got like, wait, I was on your channel earlier. How many views is that on now? Is that 3 million, I think, or nearly 3 million? Yeah, let me sort by most popular. So yeah, 3.3 like million. Post- 3.3, mad. And then Praise got 3 million. Jeez, man. What, so is Woo the most popular now? Yeah, so Woo's the most popular at 3.3. Well, Praise was the most popular for a I didn't even know that. Yeah, so that's gone past now. And then Glizzy's sure on Bobby Schmurder, 2.2. Bobby Schmurda probably pushed it up because he's one of the keywords on there. Oh, is he? Yeah, oh, it was, it was a, it was a pop, Bobby Schmurda type beat, but it was when he was still in jail. So it's like, and now he's obviously come out of the hype up again and it's probably like given a new bounce to it. That's crazy. So that that mm. video popped off for Pop Smoke, and then as soon as he comes nice out, it pops it off Bobby, for looks like. Bobby Schmurder as well. That's mm. mad. So when you started YouTube, um, like what what year did you start YouTube? Are, are all of the old videos still on there, or did you delete them when you got better? I mean, I was, if if you look, oh, actually, man, they all okay, private. One, but I had, one two years ago. Yeah, I, those are my drill beats. Yeah, they were the first type beats I was making, and then. Um, like I was doing like guitar playing, like playing a guitar. I've yeah. got loads of beats privated. Um, no, not, not beats, but loads of videos privated. I mean, uh, and those are probably from like five years ago, but yeah, yeah, I started taking it seriously in 2019. Um, then I started taking the American pop songs like beats, like end of 2019, early 2020. Yeah. And then, yeah, that was, that was the year for me. So it was about a year of doing it with no really, I wasn't really getting anything out of it for a year. Right. And then, like, but it I think people do need to be patient sometimes because, like, it doesn't doesn't happen straight away. Like, even if your beats yeah. are already there, it doesn't happen straight away. Sometimes you need to find uh, the right artist to go along with your style, or sometimes you need to find, um, or just wait your turn almost. Or just wait until mm. there's there's a gap in the market and wait until you can fill it. So it's like it's not always quick, quick, quick. But when but when there was a gap and I saw it, no one was really making pop song type beats. Yeah, um, everyone was just still making UK type beats. I was just like, okay, I can do this. Um, and yeah, I just started uploading them. They went crazy. Yeah, it was a, it was a great time to do it, to be honest. And unfortunately, he died. Um, oh man, imagine yeah. where we'd be like right now. 
if things didn't happen the way they did like mm, he was yeah, turning long, into man. like well he was like the biggest artist in the world really at some yeah. point wasn't he so yeah it's, man it's, it's really sad yeah so when obviously you had the channel and you were maybe uploading for about a year without anything really happening what mistakes do you think you were making then or do you think it wasn't really a mistake it was just like you just had to keep on building up them mm -hmm. keywords I don't know. I think it was just, it was just the types of beats I was making because my yeah. thumbnails were cool. I didn't really change my thumbnail style that much. Um, I don't know. I think it's just trying out different stuff, trying out different styles, trying out what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. So someone I kept trying was doing like a, an American artist and a UK artist in the same title. Right. I kept trying it and then I realized they weren't really doing that well. People, Tend to click more if it's just UK, UK or US, US. Like, if yeah. I'm mixing it, it, so it didn't really work. And then thumbnails as well. I was like, oh, well, this font looks cool, but as a thumbnail, it doesn't actually work that well. I need mm. a clear font or something. And I worked out what people want to click on, what people like to see, like what sort of colors in the thumbnails I like, what settings to change on Photoshop and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense then. Because I feel like with, with people starting type beat channels, it's... I feel I feel like part of it's down to luck or not luck. I don't want to say luck because I don't, I feel like yeah, you're I get what your you mean. Luck. It's like the brand of it. Yeah, like you have to like be in the right place at the right time in a way as well. Mm. I think yeah, that is luck as well. It's luck. And it's, yeah. you, you have to follow trends almost. I, yeah, what type yeah. beats? You do have to follow trends. And it is a bit like it does annoy me sometimes because like, I don't really want to make this type of beat, but yeah, it's yeah. Like, um, that's but you game, feel like yeah, so, you have to upload because yeah, like, you need like, to be consistent. See, um, I'm I'm terrible at being consistent. So it's not that, but it's more <laughs> like it's more like if I know something's gonna pop off and I know oh this is gonna get loads of views. Yeah. Like for a while, I was even when like my videos were doing really well, I, I was hating making pop songs like beats because they were just I don't know. They all sounded really similar to me, just orchestral and dark. And I I didn't always want to make those type because I wanted to make like different melodic stuff. And luckily yeah, the yeah. scene sort of opened up and it. The scene is now using melodic beats, so. It yeah, it's now anyway. a perfect time for you if you've got mm. that variety. But I know what you're saying because you can, no matter, you, you might, you obviously love orchestral beats, but once you've done it so many times, like, yeah. it's not, like it's as not. a creator, like as a creative person, you just get bored of it, don't you? And yeah. you want to like spread your wings a bit, like try something yeah. else, you know what I mean? I think that's similar with artists though as well. Even rappers, they might want to try something yeah. new, but the fans want something that they've already heard from you and they've heard you do really well. So it's like, you do, you do sort of have to rinse your own style out until, yeah, instead yeah. just because the like yeah just because that's what people want to hear almost i guess it, it can be hard to balance what you actually want to do yourself mm. against what people are expecting from you or what you yeah. think people want to hear how do you think you balance that because that, that can be a tricky one because sometimes um, you just want to be creative and do you but then like yeah. you just said other times you're worrying about what people what you think people want and you know what's popping at the moment I think, I mean, to be, I haven't really found a good way to balance it. I can't lie. Yeah. Um, if I, if I knew the answers, bro, I'd tell you, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I think just like I, I was just making sure, okay, there's always going to be an orchestral, there's always going to be a dark beat for yeah. people clicking on them. There's always going to be one there, but at the same time, I need to have some ones that like evolve the genre. And like, I think, uh, what helped me grow quite quickly as well was, um, just doing something different from everyone else. Cause yeah, yeah. People, people are sort of like, Oh, let me copy what this guy's doing. It's obviously working for them. And some people don't realize if they just do their own stuff, yeah. it might not work straight away. But like, as soon as, as if it's good and people start to like it, it's going to eventually work out. And then you're going to be the leader of that almost. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. And you've like, you've inspired a wave. And I think, I don't know. I feel like innovating is a lot. It's a lot more fun than just like following whatever's popping for like trying out new stuff and just creating new sounds and changing the sound of of songs and changing changing what types of instruments are being used and that um, yeah definitely i think a lot of new producers would like they kind they kind of struggle with that because like you said they see everyone else on youtube that's yeah. getting success at one thing so they think they need to do that in order to get mm. success as well but i think you're right because that. once there's so many people doing it like people do want to hear a new sound they might yeah, not know it, it gets, but once they actually hear it and mm. come across that channel and they're like, wow, what, what is that? And then they go on your channel mm. and see that all of your beats are like, it's just so different to anything else that they've heard. Then 
that's what makes people subscribe, I suppose, isn't it? Because mm. they know what to expect and it's it's something unique. I've heard quite a few people say that. I yeah, think picking like keywords can be kind of tough as well because you might like you might find an artist and you don't know because most people have said you need to pick an artist that is kind of on the come up like they're not like huge right mm -hmm. now but you, are, you you see the potential or you see that they're putting mm -hmm. in the work but there's no guarantees that that artist is going to pop off so you might start putting in loads of work and just uploading all these type of beats for this one artist and then if things don't work out for that artist then it's like all oh, your videos don't work out as well mm -hmm. you're kind of relying on these artists with tiny channels aren't you i feel like there's a there's a bit of a lag though between um like people clocking on. So I think even when Pooh yeah. Shrasby had that massive um, Back in Blood song, yeah. I reckon you could have put, you could have put type beats out. You could just be doing type beats every other day or a few every week or whatever. And you could probably build a channel. You could probably still build a channel because it's still early. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I'm, I made, I started making pop song type beats after he'd had Welcome to the Party. So right. it was, it was like he'd had a hit already. Oh, so that so it wasn't, wasn't like it was, that it wasn't on. that early. Yeah, it was, yeah. He'd had a hit, but it, it was, it was before Dior had blew and it was before the yeah. Travis co-sign and everything. Um, so yeah, it's like, there's a bit of, if, if someone gets a hit, you can just start doing that. Like Central, yeah. Central C type beats, Central C, I know Kaza and, um, Mason, mm. the Zell, like, yeah, yeah. They've, they started doing it after Central was getting a, becoming a big artist. And it's just like, there's a bit of a lag. So I, you don't need to find them when they're really small. It's more like, yeah. When you can see the, when you can already see this proof of like they're gonna grow and then, yeah, yeah. I suppose it's kind of just keeping on top of the game, like just yeah, keeping your eye open, keeping your ears open, and then once you find one thing that starts popping, I suppose that's the time then. Yeah, if that makes sense. You don't need to find them too early though. It's not like yeah, it's not like you need to find them when they're still a tiny artist. It's like you can you can give yourself a bit of time just to yeah, just not leave it too late to the point where yeah, don't leave it until they, they're about. already huge and they're already yeah, in the charts yeah. and then everyone else is going to be just be just just try and be one of the first people to do it try and be an early adopter yeah so w when you were doing these videos were you focusing a lot on like using keywords and using um <laughs> nah none of that no nah, I, I, I only found out about it recently because jester was telling me all about it um yeah Jester was telling me about vidrq and i use vidrq but i should never cut the scores or anything Jester right. told me about how to do the scores. Yeah, he's um, big on the, them when I was chatting to him on yeah. the podcast. He, yeah, he's quite big now, Jester on knows the stuff, words. man. Um, yeah, definitely. But he's mad because when I was chatting to Jester, he was saying that he kind of learned from you. Like he was listening to, it was the interview you did with BeatStars that it's yeah. not even on YouTube. I think it's somewhere on Facebook, isn't it? On like the BeatStars page. Or something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, he was saying that he kind of learned his skills. Well, you learned the keywords or he learned the thumbnails or what? It might, the keywords, I think I just, the, just the YouTube game. I don't know if mm. you mentioned like the actual keywords, but I think just the YouTube game, he yeah. kind of learned a lot from you. So maybe just picked up bits from mad. you and then, and then mm. like studied other areas. I mean, yeah, pro probably I mentioned stuff in the beat stars about the artist and the thumbnails, especially as well. Thumbnails, thumbnails, I think was what was most important for me, but yeah. not, just making sure, um, the colors are like quite vibrant and people, uh, like, cause if it's just the dull, if it's just a dull, like, back, a dumb, uh, dull thumbnail, yeah. you're not going to be wanting to click on it. Um, but then saying that, like, a lot of people have said, yeah, thumbnails are real important. But then if you look at someone's channel, like Ant Chamberlain, I, th I think it's his anyway. He'll just upload any picture from Google and it's still got like the, the black mm -hmm. at either side, if you know what I mean. It's not even like the full image. Or the YouTube's MP3. Yeah. 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 I yeah. yeah. I don't know if he still uses that now, but he, he was using that. I mean, you can't get away with it. Like, I know Gibbo and, Carl Jr. and a, like a few big channels use it, but I just think personally, it. yeah, yeah, I personally, well, just come up with your own, like if you've got an eye for like how stuff can look and if you can make stuff look clean, you may as well just do a thumbnail yeah, and then yeah. that's, that separates you from everyone else. Cause I mean, a lot of type beats do look quite similar just with the Definitely. black bars on the side and it's like, you want to, you want to be unique in a way. You want to stand out from everyone else. You want to know like, if your if your video appears in their feed, like and it's just black bars, that could be anyone. But if you've yeah, got yeah. your own like design language almost, um there's there's some other people that do like sick I can't even think of their names have right you, now. Have you seen Solka's page? Solka Yeah, S O U L K E R. I interviewed him on the podcast, his channel. Let me go on his channel. Oh now. actually I, I have he's... I have he's got like just the little icons, right? And a big like a big colour, but like a block colour and then an icon. Yeah, it's one of them videos where, or one of them pages, um, where like the, the graphics are just a bit mad when you're watching it. 
there's a lot of movement that goes with oh, the beats it? like he's done in After Effects. But his like visuals, when you go on his, when you click on any of his beats, it's got like a little introduction, like his whole mm-hmm. branding's sick. And Man. he's just hit like what, over 600K mm-hmm. subscribers. He's a good example for, for keeping like thumbnails looking fresh. Definitely. But yo, speaking of, um, like obviously you were going crazy on YouTube for a bit, but then would you say that you kind of shifted towards the industry side of things? Or do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I, I changed my, fo- my focus a bit. Um, cause I was thinking the internet, like it, it's quick to, um, like have someone up and then forget about them really quickly. And I just thought like, if I want to establish myself properly so yeah. I, can, I can be stable almost, just have more stability. Um, I want to be able to get in the industry. So. Yeah, that was, that was just going up to London. My manager had some really good links, was like helping me get in the studio with certain people. Yeah. Stuff doesn't happen straight away. You might need to get in sessions or just get around artists like a few times before they even want to start recording. Um, but some of them already had heard my tag just from YouTube. So that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of them hadn't heard of me at all. They were just like, oh, let's see this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So when you were getting into the studio sessions, like who was there? What was maybe the the first like big session where it was like, wow, I'm actually in the studio with this guy. Mm. Like, I think you remember which one? The f- one of the, f- can't remember the exact first one. Actually, no, I do remember the exact first one. Yeah. The first one I had, because my manager was looking after Morrison at the time, um, and it was a Morrison and Steel Bangles session. Oh, that's my. That's the first uh, one. Yeah, that was the first one, Steel Bangles, and I just went there just because my manager Gav just took me along. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wasn't really doing much to be honest. I was kind of just shy, just reading the room, just like letting yeah, them all yeah. do their thing. And then Bangles, like really great guy, was like, "Oh, do you wanna, do you wanna help out with this?" Because it was just after I got Eight Mile actually. The the dig that H tune, Eight Mile. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Shout out to YJ for that as well. I sent, I was sending uh, loops to YJ, and he, he used one. And yeah, that was pretty much my my first placement. Oh, that's crazy. My first big placement. Um. So yeah, so my name had a bit of like. A tiny bit of weight already because yeah. that song did all right. Obviously, it's big, big artist. What, what number did that hit in the charts? Uh, it hit number nine. Number nine? Um, yeah, behind. number nine. So it's, it's top 10, so I couldn't complain. Yeah, um, of course. So yeah, so I went to the session and to be honest, if I hadn't had that song, I probably wouldn't have been able to get in that session in the first place because there's no yeah. really need for me to be there. But because I'd had a top 10, um, you could, like those sort of stuff open up a bit of doors. So I got, managed to go in the session. Bangles like he, he was making a drill a drill beat. He was like, "Oh, Chris, help out with this." He liked what I was doing. Like, like he was like, "Well, how did you do that?" What, what oh, job did it give you on the beat? Can you remember? Uh, I was doing. I can't remember. I was just doing some like grind bases and automation yeah. and stuff, and just making a mix sound cleaner, more drilling because right. he typically doesn't really make drills. So yeah, um, was it yeah, pressure? Was helping, like the first time working with him. Yeah. <laughs> what do you say? Was it was it pressure the first time working with him uh, when he's like, "Oh, jump of. on this." Yeah. But and then again, I knew like I knew what I was doing because it, it was a drill beat. Like I'd made hundreds, hundreds of drill beats. Yeah, so, yeah. Like I, I was. If he'd asked me to do an Afro beat, then I'd have been like, oh, oh, I don't know. I'd, <laughs> I I'd have start. tried it, but yeah, yeah. It was luckily it was drill, and um, yeah. AJ Tracy ended up just coming in that room. It was at Metropolis Studio, and he just ended up coming in that room. He ended up popping on that song as well. That's so that song out as well. But um, that was my Still first not. session. It was AJ Tracy it? Morrison. This, I think it's coming out of Morrison's tape. I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to say that, but yeah, oh. maybe let me but know yeah. after if so. I'll, I'll chop it yeah. out. <laughs> I think I think that's calm still. Yeah, I think yeah, because there's, there's there's some videos of it out there, but yeah, that was my first session, and that was just like kind of gave me an impression that oh, this is the, that's the life. Like, yeah, this, I bet, I bet that motivated do. you like ten times more than anything yeah. else. Do you feel no, like that was more more motivation than seeing them numbers on YouTube? Like seeing that, like. Well, I don't even know how many numbers you had before that. Like, did you have any tunes that were over a million views? Uh, they weren't, they weren't a milli, but they were like, I think my biggest one was like 100k. And it was probably Woo at that time as well. Cause we would, we would, I probably just released Woo and yeah. like 100k. So it's doing so it's a right. different type of buzz, I suppose, isn't it? Like you get mm. the buzz from YouTube, like seeing the views on there. But then once you're actually live in a session with someone, it's like yeah, a whole nother buzz, I imagine. Yeah. The, the two different lanes, like almost like, I don't know. I think the, the bangles one, it was just, it was like a, it was a weird feeling. It was just like a, 
I don't, I don't even know how to describe <laughs> it because I kind of, I, I wanted that to come anyway and I was kind of like yeah. working so hard to make it come. I wasn't, I wasn't that shocked when it happened, but yeah, like yeah. I was, I was grateful for it and I was happy it happened at the same time. Yeah, of course. And it's like, it's an achievement for yourself, isn't it? It's like, mm. I've, I've worked like this hard and all my beats, like I've got to this level and, and bang, I'm in the studio with someone that you're probably listening to his beats from a young age, isn't it? So, yeah, literally. Yeah. So do you think, because it's weird, yeah, because I, I have a, a lot of people that I've interviewed and a lot of people that I've spoke to that are more in the industry and have never done the online thing. Mm-hmm. Some of them are kind of jealous of the people that have done the online thing and have had all the YouTube success because... And a lot of people have said the problem with the industry is like you can get fucked over easy. Like if business yeah. isn't handled well, 100%. you might you might be trying to chase your payment for months and months. Yeah, whereas, particularly just to get paid. Yeah. So a lot of people have said, yeah, I can do all this industry stuff and have these placements, but if I'm not getting paid, then how am I treating it as a business? Whereas mm-hmm. if I'm online, I'm fully in control of my shit. Like I'm not waiting for anyone to release anything. Mm. I upload my beats when I want them to go up. Like I upload tutorials when I need them to. And when someone buys a beat online, it's instant. It's just straight to your PayPal, isn't yeah, it? You're literally. not waiting no six months to collect a mm. payment. So have you have you had any problems? Like you don't have to like mention any names or anything, but have you ever had any situations where it's like, yo, I'm not getting paid how I should have been I mean, paid or? Yeah, it, industry stuff takes... Um, like it's annoying, I can't lie. Industry job yeah. takes ages to get paid. Um, it's frustrating. A lot of stuff falls through, so you might go to a session, record a song, and that song's never gonna come out. Yeah. Um Yeah, I think I was lucky to have really good people helping me out at the start. So I had my manager dealing with a lot of the contracts and also YJ when we were dealing with the business for the Dig That H right. song. He did me really nicely. He made sure I yeah. got like we split it half and half and I got a good up front for that. And he could have just he could have fucked me over, like he could have just said all right, you're getting 50 quid, you're getting 100 quid. And I would have probably said, yeah. I said, yeah, 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 you would have just been gassed guess, for the actual place. I would have gassed for the song. Yeah, I would have, I would have gone with anything. But yeah, like I was lucky to have really good people helping me out. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I think that helps a lot as well. Just having the right sort of people, people that have your best interests. Um, what's the, what's the phrase? Their best interests at heart. Of course. So do you think if you had to pick one, so you could either like just just do the online thing and have the YouTube channel and, and Lee Speaks online or drop that whole channel and just do the industry stuff. Which one do you think you choose? Mm. <laughs> for the money, online. Yeah. For the enjoyment, industry. Because it's like, mm. there's a lot more... It's a lot more rewarding making stuff and me and artists and making stuff with them. And it's like, it feels a lot more personal. Yeah. Um, so I would, I probably always do that just for the love of it, but I can't deny the, Like I probably made 10 times, probably 20 times the amount I've made in the industry. Well, I've made 20 times online. So like yeah. I made way more online. Um, see, that's crazy. So that's probably why like the people that I've spoken to in the past have, who have been more in the industry have said that exact thing yeah. because. Maybe it's like you get into it for the love of it, don't you? But then at a certain point, like if people have got like bills to pay, they've got like the house to pay for, then it's not stable at all. Like it's not. Yeah. Um, I think as well, though, once you get to a certain stage, you can make money cons- like consistently in the industry. It's just, yeah, it's like a quiet, it's like you have to go for a while without making any money to then yeah, start yeah. making money. It's like, and it's a lot of people don't have the, what's the word? They can't really push through it because obviously like people run out of money. You're yeah. not going to be able to like, it, it is hard. I can't lie. But as, if you can push through it and keep working, then like it does, I have seen produce, like it does pay off for producers. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of like very successful producers that have just done the industry thing. So yeah. of course there's like a lot of success you can have. But um, yeah, it's, it's interesting though to think about, to say that, you know, you could be making 10 times the amount online, but I suppose like, I mean, it depends that's, that's what you're in the case, game though. for. I, I yeah. feel like it's not the same for everyone. Like I know certain other industry producers who've tried to do the online stuff. Yeah. It yeah. hasn't worked for them at all. So it's like, it's, it's what you're good at. And I think me, I think thumbnails are quite responsible for a lot of my stuff and just finding, yeah. um, just finding artists. That was what helped me a lot. So, yeah. I suppose there's no reason you can't do both though. Or do you think, here's a question for you. So a lot of people might say, or I've heard this term like YouTube producer, you know, when people mm-hmm. say that, do you think from working like more in the industry, 
do you think there's like a bad light that's like on internet producers in a way? Do you think they look down on that or do you think that's th that's just old school mentality and that's past now? I think there was. And I think some of the old producers still feel that way. But yeah, like I feel it is honestly jealousy because yeah, like, and I, I think more people are just like, yeah, that's the way it is now. Cause they, that, some artists just go to YouTube to look for beats. They don't go in the sessions anymore. And yeah. I feel like. And it's not like, even just the independent artists that are doing that. It's like big artists because yeah even like drake for example like why wouldn't you just type in drake type beat because it's a bunch of people that are just making beats like just like, you, uh, uh, yeah for you so of course like when the people get home they're going to be typing it in mm. it's probably happened a lot of times mm. so do you think you, you're going to carry on with both then do you think you'll stick to the industry side but then carry on that's, with that's YouTube my, as well that's my target for now obviously i, I don't know if stuff's going to change yeah but for the meantime that's what i'm trying to do um yeah. I know you, you mentioned it briefly earlier as well, but um, what's making you start in, like what made you want to start tutorials as well? Like, have you announced to everyone that you're going to mm, be doing tutorials? I've, I've, I've told some people, but I think, yeah. I'm not even sure if I'm going to do tutorials like as often as you do. I might do the tutorial every so often, but I think most of the time it's just going to be cook-ups and just content and stuff. And yeah, I just think yeah. for that, it's, it's just been like, I feel like with a, with a brand, especially as a producer, it's important to show off your like personality and show off your face as well. People want to see that. They want to see the behind the scenes stuff. 100%. Like, I feel there's some producers who they're almost too, but like, and producers in general, they do like to be behind the scenes. Yeah. But some people are too behind the scenes and they don't like, it's easy to get forgotten about if you're just always moving low key. So I think if, if I build my own brand and build my own like, channel it's like something else i can stand on which is just me and it's like i don't have to rely on any other eyes for yeah like i can use it i can just do stuff i want on there that's my plan anyway i'll see how it goes yeah that makes sense and for, for you as well because you've got so many tracks out there you could even just do like beat breakdowns I could do breakdowns, yeah yeah and they'd I be so much was, easier to film because mm. you've literally got the beat there and people would, mm. would search that shit they want to see that all day don't they mm. so that'd be like a an easy thing because i can't lie they, they can be time consuming it's more the editing part I think consuming. I've already paid someone to edit it because I've, I've tried yeah. it before. I've, I've it is it, log. I'm not gonna lie, it's log. What were you using? Adobe Premiere? Yeah, I was using Premiere. I still use Premiere now for my YouTube beats. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I use as well. Mm -hmm. So what when you're doing your YouTube beats, do you not just export from, from FL? Because you can use that Z. Is it Z Game Visualizer? Nah, I don't use that. I think, I think that, I don't know actually. I haven't checked recently, but at the time the quality never looked that good. I what just... Yeah, the way I do, I just I make the beat in FL, and I make a f thumbnail in Photoshop, and then I just yeah. drag the beat, just drag the wave to a Premiere, just like one audio track, and then just drag right. the picture the and so, well. the video channel, and then and then just drag it out. So it's like it's yeah. just two, it's literally just two things in the in the playlist. So it doesn't take that long to do. Yeah, I suppose. I didn't even think about like the, the quality being better in Premiere, but it probably is because there's only so many settings mm. you can choose in in Z game. But yeah, I think as well everything just, in. You can't really make I mean you, you could technically put the Photoshop photos in, but I don't know, it yeah. just made more sense to me just to do it on Premiere. Yeah, of course. No, it makes sense. I suppose once if you do actually start a tutorial channel as well, you've you've already got an audience of producers, but once you start even a beat breakdown channel or a tutorial channel, you start building up a sick audience of producers. Mm. And then if you put something out, like I know if you put out a drum kit, that shit would fly in, in no yeah, time. I'm, Have you put I'm one working out on a melody kit? Um, I'm working on a melody kit right now. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to do like quite a lot of live instruments. I'm looking for a lot of live string players to do to right. help me with it. Um, just cause I want to make it different. I feel like I could just put some, like some of my loops in, but, yeah, yeah. It just wouldn't be that interesting. So I want to make it like a whole, like, even if people don't know me, it's like, oh, sick. This, this is a sample library full of string loops, like real string loops. And I'm like proper them compositions all. rather yeah, than just like, Omnisphere bands. Yeah. Not, yeah, not just, not just, not just, um, Omnisphere and contact and stuff, but real instruments. I feel like there's a, it's, it's not that easy to get your hands on if you're like a little producer. No, you're right. 100%. And I feel like, you, you could easily hire a session musician and just pay them mm, for the session. That's, yeah, that's my plan. That's my plan. Yeah. She wouldn't even need to, they wouldn't even want royalties, a lot of them, especially if you've got like a session musician that's in, mm. just in uni or something, you know, like in a music college, just pay them for the day. They'll cook up some loops with you. 
Mm. So so that would be sick. Yeah, I think you're right. There's definitely a gap in that sense. Because a lot of people are doing the same thing with loops. And the, there's so many people making loop kits out there. But again, it's one of them things where if you've got a personal brand, then that's what's going to mm. help the loop kit sell, especially when it's the quality that you've got. Uniqueness, yeah. I think that's, that's what, that's what um, matters, I feel. Because people, people in general just tend to do what everyone else is doing. And that's the sort of, all producers do it. Like, even I do it. Like, at the start when I was making type beats, I was just making A8 Mellow and Axel type beats, just pop yeah, type yeah. beats. But I feel once you start bringing your own stuff to the table and you start being like, okay, well, I want to do this now. Yeah, um, yeah. You can really like, now you can be the inspiration for other people. So now, like, people are making type beats of you. So. Yeah, of course. That's, no, yeah, that's, that's what I'm, I'm thinking anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see that. And I think, yeah. I think when I was searching recently, because I was trying to figure out if you did have a drum kit, because mm -hmm. uh, like Ghosty just dropped one. I bought Ghosties. So I wanted to see if you had your sounds. And I think someone oh, I made got, a fake kit. A I got, fake I got Chris like Rich kit. four or five fake kits. There's one of them, yeah. Um, there's a, there's one on Reddit, which is a Chris yeah. Rich drum kit. Which I've, heard, I've, I've been in sessions with like other producers and they've got it there. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Where that's not even, this? but what, what it was, yeah, it was a Wonder Girl kit. And it was yeah. a guy I was trading kits with. Um, and he sent me loads of drill kits. Yeah. So this is the guy who had, do you know, have you, have you been on Reddit and you have that master folder? It's got that mad folder of all the drill kits. It's got yeah, every single person's drill kit. Because my been leaked in there. I yeah. think there's an updated one. <laughs> oh, there's an updated one. Yeah, they keep getting updated, just adding more people. But the, the guy yeah. who first had that, he was just, it was just one guy. And he was like, oh, I'll give you all of these. Just send me some drum kits. So I sent him a Wonder Girl kit. Yeah. And then he like, he took the name out and said, it's a Chris Rich kit. So oh, this guy. But, um, like I can't really blame people for doing that because at the same time I was partying everyone else's <laughs> kits. Yeah, like Ghosty, Caesar, everyone's kits were just in there. I didn't pay any of them for that. But since then I've started paying for kits properly because I just feel like it's, it's better to support. Um, yeah, the better to support like the community really. No, hundred percent. Everyone starts off the same. Man, any new producer yeah. that that downloads FL, they always start with a cracked version of FL, mm. cracked all the plugins, downloaded Literally, all the drum man. kits from Reddit. And I was the same. I'm, I'm not going to stone. Like, I was the same when I started. But then once I started making some money through music, I was like, you know what? Like, let me just, like, support the community and support yeah. everyone. Even, like, plugins. I don't even crack plugins now. It's just I'll, um, I'll just pay for it because, I don't know, I kind of believe in karma as well because no. I've cracked people's kits in the past and now my kit's out mm. leaked on pirate sites. So that's my mm. karma for doing shit in the past. So... I don't know, like moving forward, I'll no, just be like, you I know what, anyone puts out a kit, I'm, I'm buying it. Of course, yeah. Mm. It's, so, it's good to support, um, like especially plugin guys as well, because when you're buying their yeah. plugins, it makes them, they're going to be able to make better plugins in the future. So Yeah, definitely. It's exactly. like if no one's paying for the plugins, then what's, what's in it for them? So yeah, of course. it's important. Yeah. So luckily, I was um, like, when I started making a bit through the channel and everything, I was buying like a few plugins and then I was emailing the companies and showing them the videos that I'd made because I'd bought mm -hmm. and used their products. And a lot of them were like, yo, we, we like the videos, like you should try these products as well. So I did it with uh, like Native yeah. Instruments and then they sent me a bunch of contact banks, which I would have paid Crazy. money for. But mm -hmm. because I invested like a, a little bit and just showed some love to them, like they're showing love back. So mm -hmm. that's just how I look yeah, at I it now. To, I need to get on that, man. I need to email some of these guys. I, I do, love man. a lot of the companies. I like, I'm proper, proper obsessive about it all. Like, um, yeah. Keep lists of all the companies on Native Instruments, Arturia, Brainworks, Good Hurts, the loads. Yeah, the ones that Soft have good. Soft Tube, have Soft Tube? Soft Tube, yeah, yeah, yeah. Soft Tube, they, they've, they've got, got like the free stuff. distortion plugin, don't they? Yeah, they've got, so, but it's all, it's all solo key as well, I feel. Yeah. The Soft Tube stuff. Yeah. Brainworks yeah. as well is a really good one for mixing. Um, yeah, there's hella, hella different. Eventide as well. Baby Some Audio is quite a new one. They've got uh, a few yeah, good plugins. Baby audio. I've seen a lot of people sponsored by them. Like I saw a Pro by Jack video on it time ago. Yeah, yeah, they're quite good with it. I feel like mm. any like quite like modern company, they kind of know the power of influencer marketing, especially for tutorial mm. guys on YouTube. Because a lot of the ones that I've emailed, a lot of like the old school ones that you can tell they're not like the best with marketing, they mm. kind of ignore you. But then the ones that are quite modern and you can you can just tell, you can see it in them. They're the ones that are like happy to give you everything because mm. they, they know... If you're like making all these videos for like thousands of people and you're using their plugins, then of, of course gonna, people are going to buy it. Yeah. So mm. a good one to have is Plugin Boutique. They offer a, like affiliate program. So 
you make like your own links through plugin boutique and you get like yeah, 50 commission. I use a plugin boutique. Um, yeah. I use some so if you buy stuff through there, you can, you can, if you email them, they'll set you up with, um, I'm, they definitely do it for you, but they, they'll set you up with your account. But then if you ever want to buy plugins, you just buy it through your own account. So then you get commission mm. on your own sale, if you know what I'm saying. Crazy. So yeah, they're a good That's one. Sweet. Baby audio, native instruments are good. And what are they called that do addictive keys? Is it XLN? XLN, yeah. Yeah, they're definitely worthwhile reaching out to. Mm. And Cymatics as well, because they've started doing plugins. Oh, they've got yeah. some good ones. They just did Diablo and Pluto. I think I did sponsored videos for both of them. They're actually sick plugins. Mm, yeah, Cymax. I use their drum kits when I'm making that like, house stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Future based stuff, weird stuff. Well, I, um, I, I really like Spitfire. I, I was going to the Spitfire studio quite a lot in the, in the summer. Um, oh, Spitfire's hard. Like Spitfire Labs. Yeah. Spitfire Labs with the contact libraries as well. They're quite yeah. expensive, but I think. For the it's quality. Like, it's like, yeah, it's like buying like a. Like a, I don't know, like buying a Canada Goose compared to a North Face. You're buying the best of the best <laughs> yeah, when you're yeah. buying Spitfire. Yeah, like, of course. Even yeah. their free plug-in sick, have you used BBC yeah. Orchestra? That's uh, hard to I, say I haven't used free. the BBC one, no, I need to get that. So That's good. To say it's a free like plug-in, it. it's one of the best ones I've used. Mm. Do you know Orchestral Tools as well? Orchestral what? Uh, orchestral Tools, they're another company. Uh, they're cre- they do all the Metropolis Arc stuff and they... They've got like their own little, they're like a competitor to Spitfire, but they're sick as well. Yeah. I need to check them out. Nah, I don't even think well, Spitfire is them. my favorite though. Spitfire, like, I love them guys. Is that been your go to then for all of your, of uh, a lot yeah, of your pretty, orchestral pretty beats? Pretty much. Spitfire and orchestral tools for well, the orchestral stuff. Um, but yeah. And then what's yeah. the other one? There's one that I've been using. Sonar Score have some good banks. You ever Sonus come across score, their stuff? Like yeah. Um, They've got off. a sale on right now. I got an email yesterday. It's like five contact banks for like mm. £10. And uh, then if you clock that, it? it's sick. Yeah, I'm going like to got, buy that. It's got a half bank. Sonus score do a lot of the... They do a, yeah, they do a lot of the... Like, like, vocal phrases and stuff. Yeah, like different type of instruments. Yeah, yeah. So they're well just I bought it, but I haven't even downloaded it yet. i just seen the offer come through. So I was right. like, why not? And it's a charity thing as well. So all the money goes to charity and then you get like five contact That's banks. It. I'm going to have to get on that. Yeah. I don't know how good they are, but I mean, with it's with it being Sonus score and contact like for £10, mm-hmm. you can't even go wrong, can you? Me as well, man. Yeah. So how about, this is one question that a lot of people ask because when I told everyone that you were coming on the show, like I sent a message to the Discord and just to see if they had questions for you. Some people mm-hmm. wanted to know how you've been balancing YouTube life with the industry life, but you kind of covered that. But then everyone wants to know your secrets for mixing. And I feel like everyone that I interview and everyone that I speak to says that the, there aren't any secrets. Like it's just good sound selection. And I'll like be just honest, basic there's, there's a lot of secrets when, when I'm doing shit. Is it? Um, <laughs> yeah. Like I'm, like I do a he- like hella research. Like the amount yeah. of time I spend on stuff, it's not worth it most of the time because I'm up just reading like the littlest stuff about compressors and about different settings. And, yeah. Um, Oh, oh, so there's stuff, actually but, a lot that goes into the mixes. It's not just choosing good sounds. I mean, it is just choosing good sounds. But if you if you know how to like, I'd say if you learn how to engineer vocals, so yeah. if you learn how to record a good vocal and um, you learn how to like be a mixing engineer almost. So like how to mix, because like most of the time when you're making a beat, that's not the even if you've exported the beat, that's not the mix that gets chosen in the track. Like in an industry course, track, yeah. they get an engineer to mix it. Um, so if you just find out what the engineers do into the song, because they're just adding effects to like, they're adding their own distortions and saturations yeah. and EQs yeah. and stuff. If you find out what they're doing directly, it's like, you can almost make your mixes sound better than everyone else because you're like, mm. um, you're getting the info straight from the, like the people who straight are closest to how an actual song sounds. Yeah. So that I makes think, sense actually. There's, there's some really good, like, websites about it. Um, yeah, just finding out about all different, um, compressors and, like, preamps and saturation, like, different modulation effects and stuff. I'm going to get some go to, like, as well. mentor in a way, like, someone that you always go to to learn for, like, mixing techniques. Is it, like, online um, courses that you've done or is it just Yeah, I did, I did one up? called uh, Mix with the Masters. That one's right. crazy. That's, like, I think it was, like, 300, uh, it was, like, 180. Yeah. yeah. 
and they just break down loads of like uh, big songs, and they just break yeah. the, the guy just goes through them and says, "Oh, this is how we did this. This is this is what compressor we used." And you find out about all the different colors and like the different compressors and like not every, especially with the vintage compressors, not every vintage compressor sounds the same or EQs yeah, yeah. and stuff like there's like pull tech EQs and tube tech EQs and it's not just like a fab filter where Gosh, uh, yeah. you can you can get certain <laughs> colors with EQs and stuff, but um like. I think it's important to learn all the knowledge and just to soak it all up and learn as much as you can. And right. then, but when you're actually making stuff, I, it's not like I'm using 10, 10, 10 like effects on one channel. It's like, I'm typically just not, it is just right sound selection really. And it's just, it's just yeah, yeah. making sure everything has space. Um, making sure levels are right. Make sure the drums are on top of everything. Another thing about drill as well, I found a lot of people doing. I don't know who started this trend, but there's a stereo shape in the bass. A lot of yeah, people yeah, do yeah. that. I've seen that in a lot. A lot of people <laughs> do that, and I think it completely fucks up the phase of the bass and it makes yeah. it. It takes out a lot of the sub of the bass. So I don't. I'm not. I'm not about that. Like personally, I'd. Yeah. I like yeah. keeping my bass mono, keeping it there, like in a proper, good set of speakers. It's going to sound a lot better. And then. Um, what about what about widening the highs? Because you you can get the frequency splitter in. Could, yeah, if you've, got a, if you've got a frequency splitter, I do actually do that on some of my beats. I've got yeah. um, I've got an imager or a frequency splitter. Um, yeah, um, the multi band multi band images. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, I've seen, I, I've, I, I'm the same. I've seen like a lot of videos where someone throws on an 808 and then it boom, it's straight like a flanger or just something mad yeah. straight on the 808. But no, it's, it's, it sounds. It, it does make space for the kick more time. Yeah. But then you can also get space for the kick with doing other stuff. So you can just go to the envelope settings and you can yeah. put the attack up a bit. So you can yeah, have it yeah. back home. So that, that, so it that kind of fades that, in like real quick. The, yeah. The envelope shape is like that. So yeah. instead of being a rectangle, it's got a little like diagonal yeah. going up. Um, and then also you can just do a side chain. There's loads of good side chains. There's that uh, kick, kickstarter, I think. Is it kickstarter? Oh, yeah, kickstarter. kickstarter. Is that the, um... Kickstart. Uh, I forgot what it's called. Is it Nick? Like something? an EDM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know which um, one you mean. Nicky Romero. Or, yeah, Nicky Romero. That right. There's that one. There's one. There's loads of them. Um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I think just find the space for your kick. It's a, it's a lot about frequencies as well and the volumes yeah. and stuff. Yeah, it's not, it's not all stereo shape in the bass. Most <laughs> of the time, there's more harm than good and the engineer will just make it sound mono again, which makes it just sound weird. Yeah, that's true. I suppose it will sound all right in headphones, but or like monitors or whatever. But then, as soon as you like play that shit on a phone or something, it's just gonna yeah. sound mad. Like, so like it, it takes, it takes a bass. lot of the really deep bass. It takes a lot of the sub out for some reason. I don't, I don't really understand why, but yeah, it does. Um, so what kind of, um, what kind of stuff have you picked up from watching engineers? Is it everything you just mentioned then? Because obviously you did uh, the online course, but then once you've actually sat yeah. with engineers and, or like, what are maybe some things where you've thought oh, like the mixing your beat is good but then you've watched the engineer do his job and you've been like oh, you know what like that makes sense I don't know why I haven't been doing that I, th I think I found out a lot about watching people mix vocals and I realised like a lot of these engineers don't actually do that much processing on their vocals like yeah. you think they put loads of effects but sometimes it's just one channel strip and, an, and another compressor and like two compressors maybe three compressors and then that's it mm. um, like an EQ effects is that but because they're like, using hardware though? Because there's no, a lot no, of processing a lot, going a, a lot of most people are using it in the box stuff. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Most places I go because everyone's on the move. There, are, there are some sick places with like good hardware. Right. Um, but yeah, most engineers nowadays just doing stuff everything in the box. Yeah. Um, just like waves, universal audio, those sort of bundles. But yeah, I think it's like it's about learning it really well and then. Using it, but not, not using it all the, like, not using it all at once. So just using it tastefully. So like, you learn how to use this plugin really well, but then yeah. you'll only use it once for the whole. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you only use has its purpose, doesn't it? Yeah. You're using it just for a specific thing. And it's just like, it's not like you're just trying to go overboard with effects and just do mixing for the sake of it. Um, I think that's one thing sure that people do when, the, once they start mm -hmm. learning new techniques, cause they'll watch a video or, at once. Yeah. Like they think because someone's done one thing on one track it has to be done on every single track oh yeah that as well yeah so 
you side chain your base, your kick to your base end, because that's another sometimes thing. What a lot of people will argue about, like, should you side chain or shouldn't you? But I suppose I mean, it's necessary sometimes. But then, in other times, I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't do it for for a lot of other genres, but for drill, I feel um, just the way the kick punches. Like Ghost used to do. Like I used to when I was like looking at Ghosty's um, beats and just like trying to learn off him. He just used to have the A weight really low. Yeah. So the kick would still be punching because that's, that's the, that's like one of the final things for drill for me to kick to punch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he would just have the bass really low, but I wanted the bass to be loud. Like it was a, like, Cause. like I wanted the bass to be booming, but I still I wanted it to duck down when the kick was hitting. So that's why and not everyone in the genre uses side chain, but I just find it personally. It's, that's what works for me because I like my bass as being a certain volume. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Even saturation on basses as well. Like, Sometimes you'll mute it and it sounds quite distorted, but then in the context of the whole mix, it sounds like, it just sounds calm, like, um, you don't hear the distortion like mad. I suppose that's one thing, isn't it? Because a lot of people will solo certain things when they're mixing it, like they'll mm -hmm. just solo the bass and add a bunch of stuff to it. But you don't really know what the whole song sounds like until you no, unmute no, everything got, else and listen to it the whole context. picture. Yeah, of course. So... You've been studying like vocal mixing as well. Is that just mm -hmm. for when you're in sessions so you know how to engineer people? Yeah, I mean, so most of the time they do have an engineer there, but yeah. sometimes I just like recording myself. Um, oh, yeah. And I just like doing it all myself. And I just, it's mainly just, it's more of like a like a personal thing with an artist. Like, right. If you're recording them, it's more just, because sometimes you just make the beat and you're just sitting there and someone else is recording and it's, it gets yeah, a bit boring. Yeah. And if I'm there, if I'm there, like, recording them I have more of the input and I can be like nah say like say it like this or nah do that again or they're like does that sound calm and like yeah that's that sounds all right um, yeah you can be more creative with it I suppose yeah. once you send it to an engineer they're just like just mixing it but if you're close with the artist then you're right you can have more of an input and like tell them mm. they might like spirit of verse and like when they say like a couple words you might be like no nah, no nah, go back to them words and yeah. add more emphasis to that word like be more hands-on yeah. like that yeah I was, I was engineering Skepta one time as well well, yeah. and that was there's an engineer that came in but I was like nah I, just, I want to record this stuff yeah you're not going to pass just, on that opportunity yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah it's cool man what was that experience I was still like learning then? at that point as well I didn't really know what I was doing Skip was teaching me he was telling me yeah. like, some lunch stuff and that a lit session man I really enjoyed it he's a, obviously he's a sick producer himself isn't he so yeah. but he was more in, into grime so I bet yeah. he was learning a few things from you but same way you were probably learning a few things from him because yeah, he's been in the game so long No, nah, definitely man I think it's important um, when you're like when you're um, working and when you get a big placement it's important not to just start slacking because yeah. I've seen it happen to some other people they're like oh I'm good now like yeah yeah but like you want to be you want to just pretend like that didn't even happen and just keep working because like there was a time where I didn't even know if the Stormzy one was coming out um, yeah because I, I knew they recorded it and I knew they did I didn't knew they did a video for it but I wasn't even going to sure if, I wasn't sure if they were even going to keep it on my beat because they might have, they was there was a stage where they were gonna get someone else to remake the beat. Oh, for um, real? Yeah. What would so, be the need for that though? Once they had, because that money, story was, was crazy. Money stuff. Oh, was it money stuff? Yeah, it was just it was all business. Oh, but we we sorted it all out. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was it was a difficult situation because it was a YouTube beat as well, and it had been leased by quite a lot of people. Right. And they were trying to get an exclusive on it, but obviously, if I've already leased it out to like a few hundred people. Yeah. I'm not going to be able to sell an exclusive for low and then I've already made off it. Yeah, yeah. So like, let's say I've made, what, um, no, let's say I made £25 off it. I couldn't sell an exclusive for £4. <laughs> so course. like, obviously Sometimes I made it, it, I bet it's not even worth selling exclusives, is it? Like, especially when the tune's got yeah, over a million views. I, I think with YouTube beats, yeah, it's not worth because you, you'll make more in the long run just selling leases. Yeah. And that's, it's like, especially if you, if you have, if you, Selling exclusive and you have to take that video down. Right. It's not just killing the sales, which is a lot, like, lot longer term of getting paid, but it's also killing the channel. It's killing the channel because you're taking down yeah. one of the biggest views. So people still message me like, can I get an exclusive on this? I'm like, I just haven't to tell people no now. Cause like, if, it, yeah, if it's yeah. on YouTube, I'm not selling exclusive because it's like, that's not what it's there for. It's there for it yeah, to sell, to sell leases. If you want an exclusive, yeah. I'll just make your beat custom. So when you're, when you're making beats now, how do you decide which one's going to go on YouTube and which one you're going to keep to send out to artists? Right, that's that's a hard one. Um, I've had like I've had situations in the past of 
the artists recording some beats in the studio yeah. and then them finding it on YouTube and then being really annoyed because they thought it was exclusive and stuff. Right. Um, but I've sort of ironed it all out now. It's just, it's mainly just, I mean, it is hard to find a balance. I, don't, I haven't really done it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying. Um, just thinking, oh, would they be okay with this? I think collabs more time I put on YouTube. Right. Cause I can also, um, like I know there's, there's a guy I love life I really like collabing with. And yeah. if I, um, if I like putting up a beat, I can link him in on the beat stars. So, I and mean, then if, if I'm, if that beat's getting sales, I'm not just getting paid. He's getting paid as well. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And it's, it makes it a lot easier for me. Um, and you're reaching like, to audiences as well. Cause obviously yeah. whoever you collab with, that person's going to push it just as much as yeah, you're literally. pushing it. And people are searching yeah. for that other name as well. So collabing is a big thing, man. How yeah. about for like new producers just starting out? We probably haven't spoke about new producers and like advice for them as much because a lot of my audience are new producers. So what would you say to new producers that kind of, let's say they've got to the point where their beats are good and they're ready to send out to artists and that's they, they want to do like YouTube and the artist thing and get placements. But what advice would you give to new producers? Like how how should they network with people? What should their their game be? Uh, be normal. Yeah. Don't don't like because I the producer community as much as I love it, it's quite like it can be quite spammy sometimes. Like yeah, people will spam you for stuff and they'll be like, a pester. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's about having. You have to have, if you want to, um, wait, if like, let's say you want a placement, I'll focus right. on placements. Let's say you want a placement. The way I go about it is hitting up people that the artist is around mm. and hitting up people that the artist like already trusts and has a working relationship with. Yeah. So for me, I really want to work with H and I thought YG was sick. Um, YG is H's producer. So I was sending yeah. him melodies and I had my melodies were quite good. So I was giving, I was giving him something of value and some producers might not have needed melodies. Some producers might already make all their own melodies themselves or some producers right. might already have 10 loop makers. So what, what someone, what might be valuable to someone is not valuable to someone else. So it's like, yeah, you can't do it on a case by case. It's different for every single person. Um, but. If you can get around them and collab with them, I think that's the easiest way to get a placement. Collab, collabing with, with producers that are around the artists you want to work with. Um, but and then I don't know, cause getting a placement and building YouTube are like they're different things. And yeah, it, it's let's, let's just the, focus on the placement side then. The cause placement. a lot of people do ask them questions. So you said like, obviously collabing I mean, with other producers is, is a gem. Cause yeah, collabing. I mean, you, I think. You've got to think though, what do you want out of it? Cause do you want to yeah. make, do you want to make consistent money or do you want to just make the placement? Do you just want to be able to say, Oh yeah, I've got a song with this guy. Is yeah. it, and is it just, you don't really care about it? Cause it's like, I think for a lot of people, make it's money, a ego thing, isn't it? Cause once they have yeah, a big yeah. artist on, it's just like, it's, it's like a break. It's just to say, thing. yeah, of course it's to, to put in your, your yeah. Instagram profile and tell man that you've worked with a certain person. Yeah. It's, it's like a, it is a clout thing as well. And that industry sort of, in, on the industry side, it does sort of run off clout. So if you work yeah. with a big artist, other people are going to want to work with you. So like, let's say you get a song with Travis Scott. Yeah. Everyone's going to be hitting you like, Oh, you work with Travis Scott. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're a better producer. It just means you manage the network. So half, half the game is business and half the game is relationships. So it's important just to be normal, just try and be normal, try and, cause some younger producers, and I don't blame them on them because I was, I was the same when I was that age. Yeah. But, um, they just don't know how to, like, interact with without, people. Yeah. Like, you have to be genuine. You can't just be, yeah. It, uh, like, it is your career and you are obviously trying to gain something out of, out of like, you're trying to gain something, something by, like, sending them energy. Yeah. But yeah. You just have to be genuine at the same time. Like, you can't just be using. It seems like you're looking for something straight away. Like, people clock that. Like, if your first yeah. message is you're asking someone for something, like, yo, bro, can I send you beats or, Whatever it is, just you know their intentions straight away, don't mm. you? I so, mean, sometimes it works though. Sometimes it's just it's just you just want to be working straight and yeah. Like, if someone says, "Oh, I want to," like people message me like, "Oh, I want to send you loops." I'll check out what they've done. Yeah. I'll check out how the loops sound, and if it's calm, I'll be like, "Yeah, sure." Like they're they're providing something, but um, some people will just 
you, you just got to go about it in a like a normal in a normal way. You can't be like, for lack of a better word, you can't be a weirdo about it. Like you have to be <laughs> normal. You have to communicate like you're speaking to a real person. Yeah, no, that makes sense. A lot of people, yeah, especially new producers, they do struggle when it comes to actually communicating with people mm-hmm. and like knowing what to say to rappers or other producers. Yeah. So, I think a lot but, of that's from nerves though. A lot of that's from them not knowing yeah. what to say. Producers aren't the most social people either, are they? Nah, it's true, it's so, true. If they I don't mean, know how to act in social situations, yeah. how are they going to know how to act when it comes to social media situations? Yeah. My, my advice would just be, just be normal, just be yourself. Like you yeah. don't have to force yourself to, to like fit in with anyone up. Like just be, just be yourself because people respect that a lot more if you're real yeah. rather than you trying to be someone who you're not. Cause people will see through that wherever, even if you're, if, even if you're like, I don't know, even if you've got quite a weird personality, if that's you, and you're not trying to, like, yeah, yeah. Like, force you're not anything. trying to put up a front. Yeah, if you're not trying to act like anything. You're not like just just being genuine as the, as the way I put it. Just be just be a genuine person. Just be yourself. Yeah, I think there's a fear of rejection, isn't there? So yeah. people might think that they need to like speak a certain way or say a certain thing to rappers. Or yeah, because a lot of producers are weird, they, they might think that they have to put up a front in order yeah. to like get attention from people but you're right people see through that shit instantly whereas if you were just yourself some people might fuck with you but some people might not and i feel like that that fear of that fear of you thinking that oh this person might not like me that's that can just hold you back in so many ways yeah. like you can't please everyone not everyone's gonna like you think about how many people you've you've met in person like you don't get along with everyone yeah, you don't do get you? along with everyone it's this it's another thing about music as well yeah it's, it's friendly, but it is, it's a business at the end of the, like, like I have met friends through music, but at the same time, you do have to remember not everyone's going to be the nicest person. Some people are just going to, some people are just there just to, like, yeah. for business, you know what I mean? Yeah, some people have different intentions, right? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think just, yeah. And f- about the fear of rejection as well, like, if, if producers are scared about that, it's like, it's kind of, you have to deal with it because even me, I I message some artists and I might have had a good relationship with them, and then they're just not mm. they're not opening my messages, or they're just like not feeling my beats and that. Like, nah, I don't like that one, or sometimes I can't even get through to them. But I feel like that's just normal. That's just part of the industry. That's the way the industry works. So it's just it's just getting used to it and just being comfortable with it. And um, like even when it gets me down, sometimes I just I think about like well. Like I call another producer maybe and they're, they're experiencing the same thing and they'll be like, yeah. oh yeah, I've, I felt the same thing. So it's like, just know that everyone else is in the same boat of the rejection. It's just like, yeah, as long as you're being normal and you're being yourself, you haven't like, you, you wouldn't have done anything wrong. Almost. And I think another thing about some people can spam and be a bit too persistent and that turns right. artists off sometimes. So sometimes an artist, like you just have to let them breathe a bit. So if you're always messaging you want to speak? Do you want to speak? Do you want to speak? Like I've seen situations of producers getting blocked by an artist. Yeah. Even yeah. if the producer's a sick producer, just because the producers won't leave him alone, and it's just like that's not that's not normal. It's like someone coming up to you, always poking you, and like, <laughs> someone always saying, "Oh, yo, yeah, yeah, tapping yeah. you every like, two minutes." Like, yeah, tapping. On, that's that's literally how it is. So just just be normal and just you can be you can be persistent in the way of keeping trying for something, but yeah, persistent messaging. Sometimes you just have to think, all right, if this person's not really taken to me that well, and if this person doesn't want to speak, then... Maybe you try another artist or... Yeah, or just give it time. Sometimes artists get busy. Even producers, like I get quite busy sometimes, or other producers will get busy. So um, just being patient and just, yeah, just if if someone's not, if like someone doesn't work or if you're being rejected or something, just try again. Just try again with someone else. Or try yeah. again with the same person. Just give it a bit of time. Give it like a few weeks or something. Yeah, because someone might send you a loop, for example, or a pack of loops, but at that time, you might not even be making beats. You might not be in a session. Yeah, you could be you anywhere. might not want to make beats. Yeah, you might be having a few days off or whatever it is. But on the flip side, someone could message you at a time where you're looking for loops and then it's just perfect timing. But you don't yeah, really like literally. know exactly what that person's doing. But if either way, if you start like pestering someone and you messaging them saying yo bro did you get the loops did you use them did you use yeah. them then, then you're just gonna piss people off and even if your loops yeah. are fire you won't even want to work with them just because I understand they're being annoying. It, yeah of course yeah 
it's that that's that's the that's kind of the way it is. But I'm, I understand why people do it, and I, yeah. I was probably the same. Um, but it's like when now it happens to me, now I realize oh, <laughs> yeah, that isn't yeah. actually like that's not what I want necessarily. Um, but yeah, like there's some days where I'm not making beats, or there's some days where I've got I've already got loops by people, so I don't need right. any, or I'm not looking for any. But then there are times where I'm, I am, so it's like yeah, it's it's there's not a, there's not a there's not a good way to like there's not a good guide for it. It's almost just it's up to chance, really. Not completely because you know you know what I'm trying to say, right? Like, I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's timing. It's all timing. Like something might not happen one time, but it will the next. Yeah, so pretty much it all just comes down to literally just being yourself. Don't be afraid to message people and, and be yourself, but at the same time, don't be pestering people. If you send something, mm-hmm. just kind of leave it with them for a bit because you never know what they're doing at that time and you never know like how busy that person is. doesn't mm-hmm. mean that they don't fuck with you. It, just, it could just mean that they're not looking for that certain thing at that time. You might already have mm-hmm. that bit covered. So what, what do you think about people kind of collecting like rappers email lists, you know, like going through like DMs, chatting to rappers, getting their emails mm-hmm. and then maybe every week like sending out pack of beats to all these rappers do you think that's a good method for people to use yeah i mean it, like it could be a good method if you're trying to get placements with those artists yeah um it, i'll be honest most artists typically they like they they they'll get beats with what's around them so if they go into a yeah, session yeah. they're gonna they're gonna just go use whoever producer they're in with right. or maybe like they've got an engineer who like loads up beats from other people it might be like, oh, I play some stuff. Let me hear some stuff. Yeah. Um, it depends. Like, it's, it's something you can do, but I wouldn't focus on that. I like, I think it's, it's much a better use of time if you're trying to build a relationship with the artists or if you, right. if you can't get to, if you can't reach those artists, building your brand up so you can rather than emailing yeah. them. Cause they, it, you, well, it's more, you have checking to be very lucky. Often, are they? What'd you say? Rappers aren't really checking the emails. No, they're not, they're not checking emails. And it's like, it's, you can probably do a better use of your time, but there's no harm in it. But it's just, yeah, you have yeah. to be quite lucky to actually get paid off. And even if they do choose it, like sometimes the artist might not want to pay you because they'll be like, did I ask, did I ask for beats off you? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. you emailed them to me. So you obviously wanted the placement. There's some artists like that. Um, yeah. It but, might be good for like, smaller independent artists you know people that might not have a big team around them yeah but that might be definitely. a good way to like build up your portfolio like just get all your credits with like the the up and coming ones first and then mm. once you've got that stack of portfolio there and your instagram page is full of all the music videos that you've done with people then it like gives you a bit of leverage then to actually work with these other people yeah I suppose. Uh, it is it's, it's about it is about the game it is a clout game it is a business game yeah. so you do have to build up your your, your connections and your network and who you're getting songs with, um, like which artists are using your beats. Right. And that's, that's, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. That's just the way like life is yeah. now really social media and everything. Yeah. But yeah. you can either hate the game or you can play the game. So like, exactly. You just have to, you just have to go along with it. If you sit at home complaining about it and not, yeah. not like trying anything, then you're not going to go anywhere, are you? No, nah, that's, so. that's another trap. You can, I was the same. I was like, ah, oh, fuck this. Me and she's fake. Yeah. And I was like, but actually, like, I could sit here and like, I could cry about it all day or I could just, I could try it. If I know how it works, I may as well try and do it myself. Even if I'm not always in the situation I want to be in, like, that's, this is the way the industry works. So I may as well, I may as well do it. Of course. So talk to me about how, like, I mean, in fact, what's, what would you say your most successful placement is or what's the work that you're most proud of? Uh... I mean, my most, my most commercially successful was the eight mile with Big Dat and H and YJ. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to work more hands on. Right. So I want to work more with like helping, like almost executive producing and like helping yeah. artists come up with like a soundscape and a sound. Um, so I was helping out OFB with that for a bit just by making beats for them. Right. Um, so I, I was really enjoying the sessions I was doing with them. Even just sending them beats. Um, what's my, what's, I think Molly, I was quite proud of. Yeah. Molly, I just, I really like that beat. Ghosty did most of that beat though. I just did the melody on that. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, Ghosty did all the drums on that beat. Shout out to Ghosty. Um, yeah, he's a G man. Yeah, but I mean, like, 
that was that was a weird one for me because I, I was sending out melodies at the time for yeah. lots of producers trying to like work with them, and I'd sent a melody to Ghosty on like I think I sent a melody to a few people like Eight with Milo Ghosty, and I was probably I was one of those people probably pestering Ghosty like being like, do you want to <laughs> out? Yo, yo, have this <laughs> yeah, melody, yeah. and he was like, actually, this is cold. So he used <laughs> it and it just sat there for ages and he uploaded it on his channel. Right. Before I'd even built a name for myself. And, um, it was like, I, I was known for just making loops and making lots of melodies. Yeah. Um, and yeah, people were saying, Oh, yeah, Chris Rich is so sick on melodies, blah, blah, blah. And then I started to build my own channel and then like nothing happened from it from Ghost's channel. It was just there. I re-uploaded it on my channel. Yeah. It didn't have my, it didn't have my tag on it originally. It just had Ghosty's tag because I was just a loop maker at the time. Oh, I see. Um, sometimes it's hard as well because sometimes speaker producers won't take you seriously and they won't add your tag to their, to their, um, beats. I feel like but you I should get and, a tag on there if you've done the loop. Yeah. I mean, at, at the time though, like, you know how it gets like some producers yeah, don't want to show you your full credit. So sometimes you just need to like have the value yourself so they almost can't ignore you. Yeah. So yeah. I just, when I built my own channel up, I'd put my tag on there, slapped it on there, put it up on my channel, and then Central C found my version. So it was the one with my tag on it. Um, so the one on your channel actually popped off Yeah, more. Uh, Yeah, that one, because my channel was like really popping in the algorithm right now. Right. And I was just looking for beats. I was like, I haven't got any beats. But what can I use? This beat's actually called by Ghosty, but I haven't uploaded it. It's just on Ghosty's yeah. channel. So then I just added my tag. Literally, I didn't even have the stems for it. I just, I just downloaded it from Ghosty. Drag my tag on top of the, on top of the wave file. And then I just oh, re-rendered shit. it, just re-rendered it. So I didn't even have, to, I didn't even do it properly. Yeah. But that's the one sent, sent shop on. Um, yeah. And yeah, that song, that's, crazy. That, that's probably the song I'm most proud of. I really like that song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, commercial success and like being a song I'm most proud of, they're a bit different. So yeah, of yeah. course. Now nah, that makes sense. How about, um, made in the Paris that reached like number, Three did in it was it number yeah. three or did it go higher than that? Yeah, I think it's number three in the album charts. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and you you got quite a few credits on there. I got one on there. I just got um. I just oh, got one. Gun Man oh no, song. it was the um. You got a few credits on Joe Commandments, didn't you? That's Joe Commandments did it. Yeah, one. yeah. I got, I got. Yeah, I was meant to have like five or six on there, but I think I I only ended up having three. Yeah, and they they messed up one of the tracks as well on Spotify, so I had four for a bit. So, um, a what? Like one they, didn't get posted? No, nah, um, like there was a Lowski song and I, right. I produced one of the Lowski songs. Um, and they put my version up on Spotify. So I had four songs on Spotify, but then Apple Music yeah. I only had three because the Lowski one was a completely different beat. Oh, completely shit. different song. <laughs> um, they fixed them now. I only have three now, but for a what, for a bit, I had three. I uh, know I had four. I mean, four. Ah, that's my head. Yeah. Basic placements to have though. Cause that, that's going to, that's going to do bits that album, isn't it? It's gonna go yeah, crazy. I like them, man. Yeah. How did you link up with them? Uh it's my manager. My manager's from Tottenham, so Yeah. That's how I started to work with them. Um Yeah, and I think just they found a lot of my stuff through YouTube. Abra won't use one of my beats from YouTube for his Kadabra Freestyle. Oh, actually that's probably that's probably one of my songs I'm most proud of as well. well. Kadabra Freestyle, but it got taken yeah. down. It had a few million views, it had like four or five million views. Well, it got taken, taken down. down. Why? I didn't even know it was taken the down. Police, the police took it down, but that was like uh, Abra's return bastards. before on deck. Yeah. That was that was a banger. I, I love that what song. What was the reason for taking it down? Was he mentioning I think it was, just, it was talking too much crud in uh, saying too many people's names. Yeah. Um, that's what I feel like Abra's sort of had to change his style because of that. Abra's now doing like the love songs and if he's done them for a while, but he's doing that yeah, drill yeah. because of it. That's fucked up, isn't it, man? That they couldn't yeah, just or something like that. Can you remember when they... They literally took down like a whole chunk of drill videos at one point. Yeah, I remember that. Um, did you have any taken down? Did you have any at that point? I know that that uh, was kind of years ago when they did that, but. Yeah, I, I was still building my name up at that point. But I yeah. remember being annoyed by it because I was like, like for a lot of these guys, this is their way to, this is their way to make it out. And um, Yeah. Yeah. People piss me off when they say shit like, like drill music influences violence. Yeah. It's like people will always try and pick something to to blame for everything where it's like mm. it's not like you're right for a lot of these people that is the only way out for a lot of people that's no, just reality to reality. them as well yeah it's their, it's exactly their reality, literally so yeah um so yeah, people people always look at something they always want to 
put the blame on something they want to think all oh, right all these people are doing this violent shit it must be the music they don't think for a mm. second like maybe it's the position that the government has them in maybe it's like the poverty yeah. that people are dealing with and they have to do certain things to get out of that it's for music, the music's a product of it i feel the music's not a cause of it of course yeah exactly they're just talking about this shit that's happening mm. so that's crazy and um, is there anything else that you're, you're working on right now? It seems like you've been real busy, but I don't know if these are stuff uh, that you've been that you've worked on ages ago. Because obviously, albums. I mean, take all of it's been in the past year, really. Yeah. I just, I think I'm just trying to focus on my own brand at the moment. Just trying right. to like, I think that's why I'm going to make my second channel. Um. Yeah, I think just getting more more drill songs. Yeah. I also want to branch out and do less, less drill and do more like commercial songs. Um, have you got some artists in mind? Uh, more commercial yeah, side? well, like, I want to work with Anne Marie. Yeah. Here, so I really want to work with as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I it's hard to find a balance between you don't want to sell out and just be making like soulless music. But right. some producers I found, like there's one guy, Alangelo, um, who does all the weekend stuff. Yeah. It's like the weekend is a really commercially successful artist. But at the same time, his music's like real music. Like it's not just some like, like. Yeah. Cause I, I suppose you can yeah. work with commercial artists, but it doesn't mean that yeah. you have to like copy an existing commercial sound. You can still add your yeah, own style I, to it. I think, I think that's, that's what I'm on really just trying to, just trying to make like music that appeals to, to everyone. Yeah. But then it like, it's, it's like real soulful timeless music. It's not just. Yeah. Yeah. Um, following, following trends and that. Do you, do you think drill's going to stay relevant for a long time? Or do you think I'm it's sure. one of them things that might, that might die off? I don't, I don't know. Cause they've said it would, they said like, they said it will die for a while, but then it just seems yeah. to keep getting bigger. It's like it keeps adapting like to a new style, doesn't it? Like it, it yeah. keeps changing. I mean, like, yeah, like a, like a, the drill beats now are completely different from yeah. five years ago. It's like you wouldn't hear six, seven rapping on a central C type beat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the yeah, drill, drill was a really dark, like crazy genre. And I feel drills, it is getting more commercial and it is getting yeah. more. Musical, like I'm hearing a lot more real instruments in drill now. Definitely. Um, and I think, yeah, it's going to continue to evolve. I think it will probably be here to stay. I'm not sure how long it will stay as the top genre. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like, it's hard to predict these things. Like, I can't, you can't really say if it will carry on or not. But me personally, I don't just want to be stuck to the drill genre. I want to be doing a lot more. I want to be, that's my aims anyway. That's what I'm striving towards. Yeah, um, yeah. I suppose because if you invest in just one thing and you only do one type of thing, yeah, like, it's like putting all your eggs in one basket. Exactly, yeah. And then if drill for whatever reason does die out, die out, then where does that leave you at that point? Yeah. So it can be a bit sticky. Do you, you don't want to put yourself in a box either, I think. Yeah, yeah. You're like 100%. just a drill producer. Oh, yeah, he's just a drill producer. Like, yeah. People t tend to like, people like to undercut people a lot and be like, yeah, he's just good for that. He's just good for that. And I want to be like, Definitely. Nah, I want to do, I want to do everything. Bro, that's what I'm trying to deal with now. Like, mm. I feel like a lot of the time for, for t people that make tutorials, a lot of people put you in this category where you're like this YouTube producer. And yeah. It's like, nah. What does that, what does that even mean? A YouTube producer? Yeah. Or like, just cause I upload shit to YouTube. Like I still, it's still a nah, producer. Man. You know what I mean? Mm. It's a tough one, but nice. Nah, it's, it's, it's hard, man. But I think it's just, it's just breaking people's expectations of you almost. It's quite like, I like, I like doing yeah. that because it makes me feel better. Yeah, I've, definitely. Like, proved people wrong. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's one thing that I'm trying to focus on now because I've done like the YouTube stuff, but I feel like I do, I do want more credits out there just to want, kind want of prove people along. Yeah, a bit, but I don't know. It's not even for like the, the money side. It's because I just, I, like a beat is an unfinished product, isn't it? And I can show people yeah. how to make beats and post them, but I do like to hear artists on my beats. So I want it just for that sense, just to hear finished products and just not have beats like just sitting there on YouTube. You and can do like the little challenges, like yeah. naming people on Fiverr. I've seen Holy's done that. And do you know yeah, when Maya yeah, did the freestyles? Yeah, that's Maya true. was doing the taking people there. I think those ideas are quite sick. That could yeah, be something yeah. you could do. Definitely. 
And I feel like I, I want I want to do it just because for that same thing of like proving people wrong, because a lot of people say, mm-hmm. oh, he's just a YouTube producer. But then once I actually get some big names on tracks, then it's like, what, what are you going to call me then? Like, are you still going to call me yeah. a YouTube producer? Or like, does that change? Yeah, do it, man. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple, I'll yeah, tell man. you after the podcast, a couple that are dropping soon. So hopefully when that happens, like, mm-hmm. then, then shit can change. But yeah, man, That's I know we've been man. through a lot in this podcast and it's getting to like an hour and a half now. So I don't want to keep oh, you shit. too long because I know you've got some stuff yeah, to do. Bad, Just before you go, is there anything that you want people to know? Is there any like last bits of advice that you want to give people? Or I know you've uh, dropped a lot of gems with people anyway, but if there's anything that you want people to know, if you've got anything dropping that people should be aware of, like the, the other know. YouTube channel. I mean, I'm yeah, I, I haven't even made that other YouTube channel yet, but yeah, yes, when I make it, check that out. Check out my, uh, my, like, um, main YouTube. Check out my Instagram. Um, yeah, I think that's it, really. I might do Twitch as well. Yeah. So, like, if people want to see Twitch, just tell me, cause I'll probably start it. Bro, people um, would love that. People would love yeah, that. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what to do, cause I, I want to do a lot of stuff, but it's like, I can't do everything. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't have time. I don't have time to do like every little thing, Twitch tutorials, making, type beats and industry stuff. Well, the thing is, if you do something like Twitch, I've like spoke to a lot of people about this, but if you do something like Twitch, obviously you can, you can get that one form of long content, do like a whole Twitch stream where you're cooking up a beat. Mm -hmm. So that is your tutorial there. So then if you're paying someone to do the videos anyway, yeah, they just cut it up. You Mm -hmm. use the beat to upload to YouTube. Then you get the segments for, um, for your tutorial channel. Like you can do everything from that one Twitch video. So I'd say like, 100%. 100%. I don't know why I'm not doing Twitch. Like, I need to do that because I keep telling people, oh, you should do this, mm. but I'm not even doing it myself. I don't think it would be that instantaneous for me, though, because when I'm making beats, I'm just like focused. I'm not speaking at all. I would forget to yeah. interact with people. I'd just be like looking at my computer. Lost. I, have, I have heard that Twitch can be a lot about like the entertainment, like they interacting with people. But mm. at the same time, because of your name and because of the work that you've done, I think people like, you wouldn't even have to say anything. People would just enjoy watching the process because mm. they'd learn a lot from just you cooking up. I think so anyway. Yeah, possibly. I'm not, I know there's a guy, Ian, Kirk, uh, Ian Kirkpatrick. He's yeah. one of Dua Lipa's producers, like a proper big pop producer. And he right. does like these mad five hour live streams, six hours. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah I'm, I, might, I might just do something Superstar like that. Superstar Rose got a good Twitch channel as well and like Ill Minds. Mm. And um, obviously oh, yeah, Kenny man. Beats has killed Kenny it Beats, as well. Kenny Beats. I think I I could do something like Kenny though as well, like just doing like um beat reviews. Yeah. Doing yeah. every so often little giveaways here and there. I think that could be cool. Definitely. Yeah, I'm not I'm not even sure what I want to do to be honest. I'm still thinking. You just have to experiment once you start it, mm. just try a few different things. Obviously you'll get the reaction from your audience then. Like you'll see it in the numbers and what people are saying in the comments and everything. So you just have to try things, don't you, and then see what sticks. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. All right, then, bro. Well, yo, once again, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Like, I wasn't joking when I said this was like, a lot of people were asking for this one in the Discord and other comments and everything. So you've probably been tagged in a few Instagram posts when I shared this. I don't even know there was a Discord. I might need to join. (laughs) Yeah, there's there's a Discord, man. So yeah, join it. I'll send you a link after this. Definitely. Appreciate that, man. But yo, we'll keep in touch and I'll speak to you soon, bro. Uh, Nice one, bro. Thanks for having me.